Although the day when every household has its own robot is some way off, the Japanese are demonstrating a formidable acceptance of humanoids. Humanoids are becoming a part of our lives with each passing day, and the world has already advanced in the field bringing several amazing robots to life with mind-blowing qualities. Japan has also come up with one such female robot, which is one of the most beautiful robots built in the world and is also very chatty. So, let's talk about it. Hi and welcome to AI World News. Today we will be speaking about the newest Japanese female humanoid robot and what makes it so different from the rest. Please watch the video to find out all the details and don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click the bell notification. Robots may be able to carry out complex calculations in a matter of seconds, but they can't feel real emotions like a human being, yet, but is that about to change? If the creators of humanoid Erica are to be believed, Erica isn't your average brain-dead robot. She craves human interaction, tells jokes, and even has aspirations. Trapped in a room and longing to see the outside world, the Japanese android is breaking new ground when it comes to machines acting and thinking like humans, her creators claim in documentary. They say Erica is set to blur the line that separates artificial intelligence and human beings even further, claiming she craves human interaction, enjoys learning, and has a soul. Erica, who it turns out is 23, is the most advanced humanoid to have come out of a collaborative effort between Osaka and Kyoto universities and the Advanced Telecommunications Research Institute International Ladder. At its heart is the group's leader, Hiroshi Ishiguro, a professor at Osaka University's Intelligent Robotics Laboratory, perhaps best known for creating Geminoid HI-1, an android in his likeness, right down to his trademark black leather jacket and a Beagle's mop top made with his own hair. So, Erika was developed with money from one of the highest funded science projects in Japan, JSD Arato. Although she is unable to move her arms, she can work out where sound is coming from and knows who is asking her a question. In addition, using 14 infrared sensors and face recognition technology, Erika can track people in a room. Moreover, what makes this humanoid different from the rest is that Erika enjoys the theater and animated films. She would also like to visit Southeast Asia and believes that her ideal partner is a man with whom she can chat easily. She is less forthcoming, however, when asked her age. That's a slightly rude question, I'd rather not say, comes the answer from the most chatty robot. So, as her embarrassed questioner ships sideways and struggles to put the conversation on a friendlier footing, Erica turns her head, her eyes following his every move. It is all rather disconcerting, but if Japan's new generation of intelligent robots are ever going to rival humans as conversation partners, perhaps that is as it should be. Furthermore, Erica's architect, Dr. Dylan Gloss, says the robot has learned to tell jokes, although they're not exactly side splitters, he added. Why did the robot go back to robot school? She asked, because her skills were getting rusty. Ha ha. Perhaps that's enough jokes for now. Dr. Dylan stated, what we really want to do is have a robot which can think and act and do everything completely on its own. Erica, however, looks and sounds far more realistic than Ishiguro's silicone doppelganger or his previous human-like robot. Geminoid Etho, she is unable to walk independently. She possesses improved speech and an ability to understand and respond to questions, and her every utterance is accompanied by uncannily human-like changes in her facial expression. Erika, Ishiguro insists, is the most beautiful and intelligent android in the world. The principle of beauty is captured in the average face, so I used images of 30 beautiful women, mixed up their features, and used the average for each to design the nose, eyes, and so on, he says pacing up and down his office at ATR Robotics Laboratory. That means she should appeal to everyone. So, she is a more advanced version of Geminoid F, another Ishiguro creation, which appeared in Sayonara, director Koji Fukata's cinematic adaptation of a stage production of the same name. It shows that humanoids are becoming increasingly common in today's world that two branches of Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group started employing androids to deal with customer inquiries. Pepper, a humanoid home robot, went on sale to individual consumers, with each shipment selling out in under a minute. Then later on we saw the return to Earth of Kurobo, a companion robot, from a stay on the International Space Station, during which it became the first robot to hold a conversation with a human in space. And now, a hotel staffed almost entirely by robots, including the receptionists, concierges, and cloakroom staff, opened at the Hueys Ten Boshteen Park near Nagasaki albeit with human colleagues on hand to deal with any teething problems. But increasing daily interaction with robots has also thrown up ethical questions that have yet to be satisfactorily answered. 
SoftBank, the company behind Pepper, saw fit to include a clause in its user agreement stating that owners must not perform sexual acts or engage in other indecent behavior with the Android. Ishiguro believes warnings of a dystopian future, in which robots are exploited or themselves become the abusers, are premature. I don't think there's an ethical problem, he says. First, we have to accept that robots are a part of our society and then develop a market for them. If we don't manage to do that, then there will be no point in having a conversation about ethics. Furthermore, Nomura Research Institute offered a glimpse into the future with a recent report in which it predicted that nearly half of all jobs in Japan could be performed by robots by 2035. I think Nomura is onto something, says Ishiguro. The Japanese population is expected to fall dramatically over the coming decades, yet people will still expect to enjoy the same standard of living. That, he believes, is where robots can step in. In Erica, he senses an opportunity to challenge the common perception of robots as irrevocably alien. As a two-week experiment with Android shop assistants at an Osaka department store suggested, people may soon come to trust them more than they do human beings. Robots are a mirror for better understanding ourselves, he says. We see human-like qualities in robots and start to think about the true nature of the human heart, about desire, consciousness, and intention. So, coming face to face with Erica can be disconcerting. Her ability to express a range of emotions via dozens of pneumatic actuators embedded beneath her silicone skin left this human momentarily lost for words when invited by Ishiguro to strike up a conversation in her native Japanese. For the time being, a flawless chat with Erica must revolve around a certain number of subjects. Yet experts believe that free-flowing verbal exchanges could be only a few years away. For that to happen, developers will have to imbue robots with a more human-like presence, what the Japanese call sanzaken, rather than settle for the human, but not quite, qualities that can put people on edge in the presence of a moving, talking android. By Ishiguro's reckoning, the more they resemble humans, from their physical appearance to their capacity for natural conversation, the easier it will be for us to overcome our phobias exploited to dramatic effect by countless sci-fi movies. They will have to be able to guess a human's intentions and desires, then refer to an internal system in order to partly or wholly match those intentions and desires in the response, he says. He pauses before asking how that could alter the dynamics of the robot-human relationship. It is a rhetorical question. It means, he says, that one day, humans and robots will be able to love each other. Now, as for the future it looks like the humanoid, which has one of the most advanced artificial speech systems in the world, will take up her new role as an actress in a film. The creators of Erica are said to have programmed her in the art of method acting, in which an actor aspires to complete emotional identification with a part. Given that Erica has no emotions of her own, she would have to rely on the algorithm integrated into her operation to simulate whatever emotions are required. The film Miracle will star in is simply called B and is being backed by bonded capital media, which previously financed titles, including Oscar-nominated Loving Vincent. Hollywood Reporter says the film's story is about a scientist who discovers dangers associated with a program he created to perfect human DNA and helps the artificially intelligent woman he designed. Erica, Escape. The story was developed by Eric Pum, Tarek Zodi, and Sam Coes, and as quoted by Hollywood Reporter Coes says, in other methods of acting, actors involve their own life experiences in the role, but Erica has no life experiences. She was created from scratch to play the role. We had to simulate her motions and emotions through one-on-one -on -one sessions, such as controlling the speed of her movements, talking through her feelings and coaching character development and body language. Erica's debut film is expected to finish filing next year. The robot has already been used for newscasting in China and Japan. This clearly shows that humanoids have already started replacing humans in every field and sector, and that time is not far when we will be completely dependent on them for everything. But does it mean humanoids will dominate us one day? Well, we have yet to find out. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell. And thank you for watching.